our bodies ourselves, only this time it's not women's bodies, it's everybody's data. And about, well, in some way at least, taking it back again. So, we all know we pr uh, produce a constant stream documenting our day-to-day -day lives, squirted up to our social uh, networks of choice, and particularly insidiously with mobile devices, we leave a trail of metadata wherever we go. So up it goes, and that's about the direction it travels in. It does come back to us in a little trickle as served ads. That's what it appears to be there for. Not going to pass any judgments on that, but maybe, just maybe, we can do something useful with it. So, make it into an asset, a community asset. And yes, um, the, I didn't get to the Emojily talk in time to receive its wisdom. We actually wrote an app. And that's the, an example that you make things of what, what is this data going to be good for? Is this going to have some sort of social, uh, social good? Well, we found ourselves at the uh, Arts and Humanities Research Council uh, Connected Communities Bash in Cardiff, and a research group in the, from the west of England came round and said, well, we're, track, we're, we, we're sort of seeking to uh, see how, uh, how engaged senior citizens are in, in their communities, especially very, very sort of sparsely populated rural ones. Uh, well, where do you get the data from? How do you know if whatever interventions you've, uh, you've done are doing any good? Well, if only we had their mobile data. That would do it. So that they wanted, they said, oh, we'd, we'd quite like what you've already built. So we've teamed up with some uh, youth coders from Young Rewired Status co-researchers, and we intend to produce, a, I guess, a marketplace of uh, what my uh, cultural studies colleagues insist on calling big social data. I will have to move slightly. I, I, I'm going to leave what the, uh, the analysis of, my, of uh, our Young Rewired State partners to my uh, cultural studies colleagues. But I think one particular statement is very, uh, very telling from a rather articulate young girl who joined us in on one of our hack days. Privacy is attached to other people. So if someone you agree to connect with is open, then you can be accessed through them because it's kind of a herd thing. You've all got to do it, otherwise one person is in trouble. So mostly the kids are all right. On the other hand, being, being of kind of this generation, being tech savvy, we have some control because we know how to have control. They're teenagers and unfortunately they still think they're immortal. Anyway. We built an app, I did at least, so called the Mobile Miner. What it does, it records data that, well, it's, as far as possible, it's about tracking other apps and not the user. Of course, there's a bit of an intersection in that Venn diagram, but that's a, we try not to be too invasive. So we try and record data that uh, we know that other apps and services are already harvesting. We also record app behavior, particularly, I'll talk about this very shortly, uh, how frequently certain apps open and close network sockets. And we make the data available to the user. I think one telling example of how our data, our data, isn't really ours, well, what you can do, you can pull out your smartphone pull out the SD card, mount it on your, on your computer, and you can access the data, your data, on your terms and not the smartphones. No, you can't because, well, at least not with any Google Nexus device since the first one, which was meant to be given to, to hackers, because they don't have SD card slots. I wonder why. Unless you root your device, you mount the device, there's no SD card slot, you have to access the data on the device's terms. So press a button, 
our app will extrude its internal SQLite database into somewhere where the user can mount the, can mount the SD card or not and get at it. And we've seen our young coders doing that and getting their SQLite files, which you can play with in Python standard library, and they're put merrily plotting histograms of when apps have been pestering them with notifications and starting to look at their own data. And this is the slightly ironic bit. Periodically, the app phones home and uploads suitably non-creepy anonymized data to our server, CCAN, or at least built on CCAN, which claims it's uh, basically Drupal for data. However, we gave them a phone with the app installed on it. There's the keep and treasure, and you can't really see it, but there is a start and stop button. So not only do you have the choice to install the app or not, you can press a stop button and you can go, right, I'm not going to play anymore. So in, in some senses, yeah, we're sort of out NSAing the NSA. On the other hand, tr honest, you know, honest gov, it's there to do so, some sort of social good. So what does it do? Um, if you look at your Droid app, I mean, your, your Droid settings, you can see that you get aggregated network traffic data. So in the, since I last reset the counter, how much data has Facebook eaten? It wasn't my idea, actually. This was uh, sort of doing it the sort of easy way and reading the instructions came from one of our, one of our young coders. So instead of uh, what we do is just be fairly, fairly easy. Well, I managed it. Get an Android service up and running and just poll network traffic data for individual apps every half a second, and if you see a constant sort of monotonic increase in the amount of data, that's one chunk and you log it. Slightly more deviously, Android is just about still a Linux system, lurking on top of a, a Linux kernel, and every Android app is a, Linux, is a, a user on that Linux system, and there's an API call. You can find out which app corresponds to uh, which UID, and I guess a, a backdoor, not really a backdoor, something Google don't particularly worry about, apparently. You can ferret around in the proc slash whatever PID slash net slash TCP or UDP, as the case may be. You can look in that little virtual file, poll it every half a second, and you get a hex-encoded IP address, and more tellingly and more usefully, perhaps, a hex-encoded port. So if the, our app shares a group with the other apps in question, we see their network traffic, we see their sockets, so we, we know what protocol has been used, we know when it's been opened, we know the IP address, and perhaps more interestingly, the port. So do that every half a second. Not as reliable. We don't get every single bit of, uh, every single app uh, playing ball with that, but I guess it gives us a little more information, or detailed information, than the uh, standard traffic data dodge. There's a picture. You can't see it. Chrome has gone and done something at, uh, well, at nearly 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but it was doing on uh, TCP port 443. It was nice HTTPS, whole lot of port 80 stuff underneath it. Interesting to give a little rundown of the apps that do play ball. Google Plus does, Skype does, most web browsers do. So other single things we record because other apps, we'll get to this, are recording it already. Network names, MAC addresses, etc. One of the slightly hackier and cheaper things I've done is that you can, uh, you can have your app ask the user to be an accessibility service. And instead of reading out notifications in a synthesized voice or flashing them up in large print, it's just dumping the time and the name of the app, not the details of the notification, that'd be far too creepy. It's dumping that to its internal database as well. And also GSM cells. Yeah, um, full GPS would have been a bridge too far. Not nice for the device's battery and altogether far too creepy. So we'll just get the cell IDs. Now, um, we didn't because of the nature of the project, we didn't want to go cap in hands of Google and say, can we use your location API? And that would, wouldn't allow us to differentiate data that came from uh, 
wireless hotspots and data that came from just uh, cell locations. So, very kindly, Open Cell ID have a big database full of, as there is, damn it, um, pretty much every, uh, well not, not entirely complete, every uh, cell ID in the UK. And so we don't hammer their poor API, which they've uh, so generously given out. What we do is I've included a huge compressed dump of UK cell IDs. And we also didn't particularly want to go cap in hand to Google and yet and use their Maps uh, API either. So, it's a pity you can't see this. This is actually some of my cell data, so I'm prepared to have my mobile life uh, admittedly somewhat invisible on this screen here. I'm the red dot. Yes, I live somewhere in Highgate. That's the GSM cell I connect to most frequently. It's got me on the wrong side of the Archway Road, so I can't be particularly well stalked by it. Apparently, I work in somewhere in central London, not especially far from Covent Garden. Sometimes I walk home through uh, Camden and Kentish Town. That's about it. Enough to sort of get some, uh, do some funky maybe k-means clustering and see do. That, you know, does my behavior differ much from one of some of our teenage coders? How many sort of nexuses of social activity do a, does a teenage coder have as opposed to a, a middle-aged one? And we disp do that by, again, didn't want to use Google Maps API, so we get a Android web view, just a controlless web browser, and use the very lovely open layers JavaScript library to uh, display open street maps. And yes, I'll admit it now, the UI and the UX, I never said I did UI or UX, is clunky. Um, to anyone watching at home, yes, I will fix the layouts, I promise. I've had other fish to fry. The data, just an example. We've only been running this uh, for, I guess it's three months now. So maybe you can see the histograms. Turns out three of our young coders downloaded and used the same game. Don't tap the white tile. That literally encapsulates what it is. You've got to not tap the white tile. You've got a sort of scrolling Mondrian picture and you have to press the tiles, only just not the white ones. And it suffers that pretty much the same fate. We've got a, a histogram of time of day and we've normalized for each individual uh, user. Suffers the same fate as most uh, games apps seem to do. Um, it's about a, it covers about a three week period for all the, all the players. So spikes at certain times of the day, five o'clock, but at breakfast, um, and not much anywhere else. And eventually it peters out. And we, of course, this is not temporal, but we could show, show how, how, how quickly the, the, the usage falls off when they get bored with it. Except. Um, Player B was pretty keen playing this thing around uh, 7 o'clock in the evening, but not nearly as keen as on this title. We've got two uniform, just about uniform distributions butted together. Um, very, there's not an hour of the day when this app has not phoned home. Sli only slightly more uh, likely to phone home at breakfast than it is to use the net at four in the morning. What could it be? Some massively addictive multiple, uh, multiplayer online, massively multiplayer online game? Minecraft, are you building a cathedral on the sly? No. Well, the idea is you move the little red dot through the scrolling maze. That was it. It's called The Line. And the list of permissions it requires are, well, I can't read them from here either, but it wants full GPS. It wants to know when you've turned the little flashlight on. It wants to know your Wi-Fi state. It wants to access the SD card. It wants GSM cell location as well. The works. So once you've used our little tool to identify an app that's uh, getting up to these sorts of capers, can we fight back? This is not going to be proper, hard-boiled infosec stuff, because I'm not that yet. But 
Can we grab the app's package file, the .apk file that you get from the Play Store? Decompress it. There's in there, there's a file called androidmanifest.xml. It's literally that, a manifest, what services and permissions and events is an app concerned with. And can we have a go at decompiling and seeing what it's up to? Turns out you don't need to have a not particularly pleasant afternoon trying to get the Android SDK installed. There is a Chrome, or better still, Chromium app. You can just point it at the relevant bit of Play Store and you will get your APK file. Love a little tool called Android APK tool. One line of uh, pointing it at the uh, APK file, or what lurks within. Don't really need to be a Java coder or Android coder. I'm not really one of those to see what's going on. There is an intent filter, in other words, an event filter looking for things that are called cn.jpush. So some sort of push notification service. I wonder why that was, because I wonder why that was, uh, why the line app was being so utterly busy on port 3000, which is weird. There's uh, a service from, some, uh, from umeng.com, who are an app analytics service. I don't know which, uh, which service wraps the other one. So yeah, we're getting intense and push notification services. So yes, the app is phoning home. And yeah, it's a notification service. It's on a weird port. That's why it's on port 3000. Dex to jar. Um, Dalvik virtual machine isn't a Java virtual machine. It takes uh, it's its own it's its own little thing. So you can use Dexter Jar to get a Jar file back again, and the JD suite of uh, Java you can files get the source code. And without knowing anything about proper sort of semi-native uh, Android coding, the usual suspects. Where is the phone state listener, and uh, where are the uh, location listener objects? They're there. So jpush.cn has got them. Umeng has got them. And there's also a class provided by Tencent.com that is making reference to the latitude and longitude. So yes, it to send you these notifications, it really, really needs to know exactly where you are, apparently. So yes, it, it really is phoning home that often and telling, you exact, telling its uh, masters exactly where you are. So yes, I will fix the UX. Can we look for patterns and interesting anomalies in other data? Social networks, for instance. Do some funky uh, machine learning, maybe a bit of k-means, spatially and, and temporally. Get some uh, interesting insights on the, the behavior of users. We're going to hold a second hack day. In fact, the, the, the picture on the side of the, the front was uh, a bunch of our young uh, We Are State coders uh, playing nicely together, much like uh, grown-up coders often don't. Can we confront them with their data? Or in fact, can they confront their data and how will that change their attitudes? I'll leave that to my uh, cultural studies uh, learned colleagues. I'd love to tack on a little inbuilt demographic survey so when we open this thing out into, uh, to more individuals, how does their behavior depend on the gender they present, their age, etc.? cetera? We'll s gradually let the data be available to uh, the right people, you know, probably uh, the academic community at first. We'll finally get onto the Play Store, and maybe I'll get a little more hard-boiled and start when apps emerge that look uh, ripe for the, the prodding, do something perhaps a little more impressive with, wild, with Wireshark or the uh, Vertprox or Drozer, etc., which I misspelt, but luckily you can't see it. And you cannot see any of the, this text, but um, we are not on the Play Store yet, but if you want to uh, play with the app, go on, give me your data. You can get to keep it too. There's a GitHub I.O. site. We are King's BSD at Twitter. We have a blog. 
feel free to file past and have a look at them. the slides will be on slide share. if you google uh, or search for King's BSD you'll get our slide share and therefore you can get the slides any questions Yep. Yeah. The oh, with your cell tower location, you can get a rough location without asking for location permission. You have to ask for location permission, but you're not tapping into sort of Google's service that packs. Um, there's nothing to say. There's no way of going to um, Google and going, "Tell me where this cell tower is," because it it knows and it doesn't want to tell you. It'll tell you it's. Your, the phone's location based on multiple cell towers and Wi-Fi networks, um, which is for us too creepy and invasive. You'd rather just go, where was the nearest cell tower? It's suitably defocused and it's about the, the network. It's about the cell network, not so much about the user. And it's a, just a reasonable proxy for where the user is. Yep. Ooh, a feature request. Um, yeah. Um, interestingly, um, when I when I haven't uh, when I sort of peeking into what the line was made out of, um, I, I think these things are sort of assembled on a, an assembly line, but not sort of put in a with not too much tender loving care. Um, there's a C plus plus library that the actual um, game canvases on, and there's a, a completely separate, um, allegedly cross-platform app builder. And when I, and there, there are a lot of, there were three other games that look exactly, well, suspiciously like the line, that appear to have used exactly the same um, C++ library. And there's no, I haven't yet decompiled the C++, I don't know if I will, and there's no smoking gun to see that these are in fact the same apps de decompiled and repackaged, but people do that, so um, it's pretty easy to perform surgery on these things, because even, even I can get at the innards, so you're quite at liberty, unless it's a sort of a paid app, to grab the, li to grab the, the line, um, open it up and <coughs> perform some surgery. I mean, there are, I found myself playing this zombie shooting game for a little bit, and it Plain, you know, if you've got no network access, it just goes. Oh, I'm not playing. I want to. No. But there's no. No actual, an actual project or a group of people that be doing this, like taking famous apps or famous TV games and. Just not as far as I know. I mean, I, I, I guess what you one of the. The things called the Android Hackers Handbook. There's a sort of a, a pulp. Well, there are two um, packed publishing tomes on Android pen testing. What you could do, I guess, if you really desperately wanted to play the game, would be to, um, in a you know, level up in your sort of infosec foo and sort of hacking foo, would be to um, torture the app by putting it in a uh, in an emulator and. It can go through some sort of proxy, and you could you, you could sort of convince it that it's on the net when it isn't really, I suppose. What you could do is install uh, uh, Cyanogen, uh, another firmware. Cyanogen, yeah. And the new, uh, the new version of that, you can disallow apps with certain, uh, for instance, location information. So you can prevent them or give them uh, an empty address book if they really want your address book. I'll, I'll repeat that because that's a good one. I, I don't know if the, the mics picked it up, but apparently, yep. If you get Cyanogen, the likes of Cyanogen mod, you can, uh, ha you, to some extent, you can uh, feed an app full data and go, look, if this thing's not going to shut up and, in, and insist on having my location, it'll just, we'll just send it some rubbish and it'll, it'll be fobbed off with that. Um, that's a, another good point because I. I, I don't know if there's any more data I could successfully wring out of apps, but one, the one thing I haven't done is assume that the phones are rooted because you can't, because phones aren't mostly going to be rooted. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, it's a good one, but I was thinking of like, the general public, not actually the people that are really into that. Yeah, they can install, they, we can install, so yeah, then it's okay. But like, creating an app store where you can get Down and 
place or easily in just a little app from there. Buy a nicer platform, I guess, or a less invasive one. Um, this is the thing. I mean, even, even now, this is sort of my, my business. And I, 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 I install some of these apps just to see what they do now. Um, instead of just blindly hitting install without reading the permissions, well, now, surely, after I've blindly accepted the permissions, I just, I, now I'm more likely to go, oh, I, should have probably, I probably should have read those. Um, people are obviously willing to make this swap. They go, yeah, I'll, I'll move the little red ball in exchange for telling... And, I mean, yeah, the um, ad service is clearly being sent your location. Now, we don't know to how how fine-grained the, action, the, the actions it takes are, you know, are based on that. It might just go, oh, right, right country, right language. There you go. Um, what if they team up with somebody else? They've got that data. Don't be sort of too tinfoil hat over this. But, oh, yeah, we've got... They can be used for purposes they didn't intend it for it at first. And, of course, we have no, you have got no say in what, the, what their intended purposes was in the, in the first place. Who's going to install the app and try it out, or who thinks it's none of, a, <laughs> none of our damn business? Stony silence. Oh, you have. Sorry, that. Ah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, there's you know, market share and all that, but um, ideally we'd have wanted, and some of them actually are, we'd have wanted our teenage coders to collaborate with, uh, you know, with, the, with the writing of all the apps. Um, yeah, so if it's iOS, that's another $100 per phone just to, for the privilege of, um, writing, you know, of a you know, developer license. Android, at least, you can say, OK, I'm going to install this not from the App Store without rooting the phone, and if you root an iPhone, it completely, I think it messes up the user experience quite horribly, because all the, all the DRM stuff doesn't, isn't going to work anymore. So yeah, I'm afraid no iPhones yet. Unless you want to write one. Go on, you know you want to. Am I evicted yet? Yeah, apparently, because um, like when, if you dump to a SQLite database every time a cell location changes, and that happens quite a bit, the phone gets warm. Um, so yeah, um, we, it's got better. If you, um, I, I cache events, and then every five minutes, squirt those down to the to the SQLite database, and it's it is less bad. Um, if you're in a, in a crisis, then stop recording. And we only, also, we own, I only uh, upload to the, the CCAN server every 10 minutes if you're on Wi-Fi. So I, I'm not evil and, well, I am. I'm not evil enough to eat up your data plan. I'll, I'll stalk you and... <laughs> that being said, I mean, what have I, what have I really uploaded? A bunch, of, um, a bunch of cell locations, fairly vague, a list of, I mean, the, the, the top app in the, in the socket database, or the socket table rather, is massively, by a long margin, the web browser. So all you can go is, well, how much of it's port 80 and how much not. So you've used some apps. We want to be, we want to be, to be it's about the, the apps and not, well, it, 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 to some extent, it is going to be about the user. But we, we're mostly into stalking the apps and not the user. Trouble is, sometimes we can't afford, a, a, avoid doing both. Tumbleweed. I, I guess it would be good to try to have a substantial index packet to see if the, an app there is as valid if you were viewed by your service or someone using your service. Do, do you have access to the so to do what, sorry? directory, build a service directory of, of the apps that are being examined? Eventually, um, just uh, f f getting it into the um, Sort of, I don't know if you've heard of Shibboleth, getting into the, the sort of UK academic um, 
authentication system is, you know, we, we, we do intend to share the data. But the trouble, I mean, we, like I said, I didn't want to sort of pass judgments on what the apps are doing already, but it would be a little bit strange if we, air quotes, gave away all the data to, you know, to the man. So we've got to think about that. I mean, I guess if you, if you weren't from an academic research group and you came to us and asked us nicely, can we have some data, then yeah. Um, obviously, it would, it, 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 we'd like it as open as possible without it doing any sort of harm. So if we were utterly sure that the that sort of really open public access wouldn't sort of do that, then yes. It's, 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 a, it's written into the, uh, the terms of the research grant, whatever we... Uh, Bill has got to you know, stick around for at least five years. <laughs> Was anyone stunned into silence by my lightning talk where I talked about our Twitter analytics? At least there weren't any. Uh, there wasn't any matrix multiplication in this uh, in this one. Okay, I think. <laughs> I think you've suffered enough. Class dismissed, you let off. Thank you.